Bonjour de Paris. Hello from Paris. My name is Louise Van Winkle. I'm an immigration officer here at the Canadian Embassy. We serve 12 countries and I have the pleasure also to be at the head of a little team doing some promotion and specifically promotion to francophone candidates who are interested in living and working in Canada and not only in Quebec. In fact, our focus is provinces and territories where French is very present but is a minority language. In that context, I would like to thank you for the invitation to present today. Um, it's a very important discussion that's being held in many parts of Canada and I know that it's a special challenge for the North uh, to diversify the economy, to internationalize the uh, population as well, and to bring in those skills that are needed in the workplace. Um, I'd like to give you a few ideas about how we might be able to support the attraction and recruitment initiatives and also uh, how we're working with different organizations within Canada uh, with projects that help the retention as well. Very important factor always. Donc pour commencer, j'aimerais décrire un petit peu le travail que nous faisons uh, ici à Paris, mais aussi avec nos collègues dans d'autres bureaux des visas. So as a visa office, we issue, of course, uh, visitor visas, work permits, study permits, and we also process permanent residence applications. Um, as I mentioned, we do have a specific mandate uh, to attract more francophone candidates, to inform them of job opportunities in different parts of the country and in different sectors. And in that uh, aspect, we work very closely with our colleagues at the visa offices in Tunisia, in Morocco, and also in Senegal. It covers a number of countries in Francophone Africa. Um, many, many people now are starting their stay in Canada on a temporary basis, either as international students or as temporary foreign workers, and make the transition, maybe make the decision as well, to stay on once they are in Canada. So I'd like to focus a little bit on the temporary work permits. Um, as you may know, the rule of thumb in Canada is for an employer who wants to bring in someone who's not already a permanent resident or citizen. They must obtain a labor market opinion. For that, it's the opportunity to demonstrate that they have uh, posted the position sufficiently, that uh, they were simply not able to recruit uh, locally or nationally for the positions. Uh, we do have some alternatives to that. I like to say sometimes that it's like French grammar. There's the rule and there are all the exceptions. Among the exceptions, maybe some ideas that could be of use as you explore uh, where to source candidates for the different jobs in, uh, in Nunavut and specifically in the Iqaluit area. Um, there are international students already in Canada. Uh, as of June 1st, anyone with a study permit will be allowed to, uh, to work part-time during their studies or full-time during the scheduled uh, breaks. So that might be one source to look at the different post-secondary training programs, university programs, where people are learning the skills that you need, bring them in for the holiday periods, for instance. Spouses of international students can obtain an open work permit. So they're already in Canada with the authorization to work. So again, connections through the educational institutions through the work placement um, sections and the international student offices of those institutions might be another way of uh, reaching out to some of those candidates already in Canada. There is of course also the post-graduation work permit that is an open work permit that can be up to three years after graduating from a post-secondary institution. Temporary foreign workers can also come in under youth mobility programs for instance. There again, no labor market opinion is required, and Canada has signed agreements now with 32 countries. That means that young Canadians can have an experience living and working abroad, but the citizens of those countries uh, can come uh, with a facilitated work permit. Um, it is youth mobility, but uh, you're young until your 36th birthday in that context. It's 18 to 35, uh, the age range targeted. Um, there are different categories. Uh, co-op programs, so students studying in their home country who want to do their internship in Canada. There's a student summer job which could be of interest for some of the seasonal work. Young professionals must have a job offer in their field of study or previous work experience, but no LMO is required and that can be for up to 18 months. And then there's the working holiday program. Uh, that is an open work permit valid for one or two years depending on the country. 
and uh, participants can come in and take any job, move around the country as they wish within that period and take any job that is offered to them. Uh, if you're interested in that, I can uh, relay some information about how to get the jobs posted and inform people who are already in Canada or planning to come in the, in the next few months with the working holiday uh, permit. Another exemption that I'd like to focus on too is the francophone significant benefit, avantage significatif francophone, and this is a reflection of a roadmap uh, which the federal government has put into place to support minority linguistic communities. So in this case, of course, francophone communities outside Quebec. What this means is that any candidates in a managerial, professional, or technical position outside of Quebec. Uh, if the applicant is francophone, uh, can obtain a work permit without a labor market opinion. This, of course, means a faster process for employers. It means less paperwork and fewer fees. And we can process those applications as quickly as in 10 working days. So that is um, an advantage, certainly, that uh, you might be interested in. And in the information sheet that has been distributed, I believe, it's one of the uh, areas that is mentioned along with our contact information if you have candidates that you've identified or if you're looking to source candidates in some of the countries in which we're working. So those are some of the ideas on how to bring in people um, more quickly or to source candidates who may already be in Canada or with the authorization to work. Uh, what I should mention too is that the transition to permanent residence is becoming uh, faster and easier. Uh, many categories are specifically to make the transition, like the Canadian Experience class, for instance, where after just one year of work experience in Canada, in a qualified position, so again, managerial, professional, technical, or skilled trades, um, applicants can uh, request to stay in Canada and become permanent residents. There's also a new federal skilled trades category that's existed for about a year now, and that is to address the needs that we're hearing from construction, fabrication, a lot of the natural resources areas where those skilled trades are really needed, and realizing that some of the other traditional categories of immigration, we're putting more emphasis on longer studies and perhaps higher levels of written language skills than are required, and really focusing on the skilled trades, so welders, uh, pipe fitters, machinists, uh, all of those folks that you're looking for with very specific uh, work skills, trade skills, can be sourced and can make the transition through the Federal Skilled Worker Program. I'm sorry, the Federal Skilled Trades Program. The Federal Skilled Worker Program still exists, of course, and uh, is open to a certain number of professions or to people with a permanent job offer in Canada. Um, what I should mention, too, in terms of sourcing, we work very closely with the public employment services in many countries. Uh, France, of course, Belgium, Tunisia, Morocco, and some of the other countries in which we're, we're active. Um, to explain that, it's as if Service Canada helped Canadians find work abroad. So it's a bit of a strange notion to us, but uh, given that there is uh, mobility within Europe, and also international mobility. The public services here have decided that they um, do have a mandate to help people uh, find work abroad and make sure that they've uh, got the answers to all the right questions before making the move. So to be well prepared uh, for a transition to a new work culture, a new social system, all of those factors that come into play with international mobility. They can help you as employers um, identify your needs, post the positions, and uh, within Europe the posting is visible uh, from all countries. That's many millions of uh, people consulting the sites each day. They can do a pre-selection of candidates uh, so that only CVs of, uh, and resumes of candidates who meet your requirements are referred to you. And in some cases they can do some testing, be that language testing or even skills testing for the specific trades. We've had great success, for instance, in Tunisia with uh, recruitment of uh, welders where the training centers there have been able to host Canadian employers to come and do the tests and now are working at a distance with them now that they understand the requirements, 
are doing the tests and sending photos or videos of the testing to the employers to help them in their choice. So these are services uh, that are public, publicly funded. That means that they are free of charge to the applicants and free of charge to the employers. So if that's something of interest to you, we can certainly put you in touch with the right public services uh, specialized in international recruitment um, at any time of the year. And uh, also, they are our partners for special events, such as our annual uh, job fair called Destination Canada. We held the 10th edition last November. It was in Paris, Brussels, and Tunis, with people traveling from many parts of Europe uh, to attend. And uh, for the Tunisian portion, a great number of candidates pre-selected by the Public Employment Services. For Paris and Brussels, this past edition, we had more than 20,000 people request to participate in a four-day event. Uh, we obviously weren't uh, able to accommodate them all, so a selection was made on the basis of the job offers that employers had posted, and also on more general uh, criteria, people who had a good level of French but also of English, who already had some international experience, either as students or workers. Uh, some had already pretty strong ties with Canada different factors so that they could come and meet the representatives of the different provinces and territories who were present and of course meet the employers uh, if they were there with job offers in the fields uh, corresponding to the candidates background. We would be thrilled if Nunavut had a representation at Destination Canada 2014. It will be coming up in November. The dates of the next edition of Destination Canada are also on the information sheet. So 18th, 19th, and 20th of November in Paris, the 22nd in Brussels, 24th and 25th in Tunis, and we're looking at adding other destinations, depending on the job offers we receive and uh, where the good pools of candidates are. To explain a bit how the job fair runs, uh, there are representatives of all the provinces and territories. I should say that up to now Nunavut has not been represented, so we would be thrilled if for the 11th edition uh, the territory was there. Um, so representatives of community organizations as well, some economic development agents uh, and other representatives who can give a good idea of the job market or potential for investment, as we do also have workshops for uh, acquisition or creation of uh, business activities in Canada. The employers can post their positions in advance um, and a pre-selection will be made of candidates. So on the basis of the criteria that are listed, they will be invited to meet with you at the job fair. There is no fee to participate, so there's no rental fee for the booth. We provide the space, the furniture, electricity, Wi-Fi connection. We also provide transportation from the hotel to the forum each day, return, and also between Paris and Brussels by bus. So we're really trying to keep it very cost effective. We've signed up the event with Air Canada, so there's a 10% discount for people traveling from Canada. And also we work with a travel agency uh, who will provide an accommodation package at a cost of about $1,200 to $1,500 uh, again this year. So that's for the whole week accommodation and breakfast. We would be pleased to give you more information. Uh, there is a link on the information sheet to a video describing the event that will give you a, an idea of how it works. And I should say that um, among the lineups that were the longest in past editions, Yukon and Northwest Territory attracted a great deal of interest. Um, perhaps it's the exotic uh, aspect of the North, that it's certainly intriguing to a lot of candidates, but I think it's also knowing that there is a lot of opportunity to find work, uh, to find interesting positions, and perhaps to progress more quickly through some of the, uh, the hierarchical levels uh, when working in a, in a smaller community. And so a lot of candidates are attracted by the challenges and the opportunities of the North. Uh, I should mention that uh, Yukon, one summer, there were 60 young French participants in the working holiday program in Whitehorse in, in one single summer. So the interest is there, the potential is there, and uh, I hope that in reading the reports and, and discussing with you by phone after this presentation, we can uh, start putting together the pieces so that we have a better idea of the opportunities and are able to communicate those to the candidates interested in working in Canada and specifically in Nunavut.
We will get back to you also with information about other fairs in which we're participating. There's a, a summer job fair coming up at the end of March. Uh, we will give you information about how to post your positions for that. Um, we will also be participating in a Working Abroad Canada Expo that will be coming to France at the end of June, beginning of July. All of that information will be pleased to convey through Carrefour Nunavut. Encore une fois, merci de votre invitation, merci de votre attention. I look forward to exchanging with you by phone.